Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be going through the starting of the chapter kinematics of a particle. This chapter is one of the first chapters to come in the physics syllabus for the preparation of JEE exam. This video is one of the first videos in the series of videos which will cover this chapter kinematics of a particle. And our focus of discussion in this video will be on four quantities which are used to define the motion of a particle. And the four quantities which we are going to discuss are position, displacement, velocity and acceleration. So let's first start with position. Before starting, I just want to give a quick overview of this chapter that kinematics of a particle deals with the motion of a particle because the word kinematics relate to the motion of a particle with respect to time. The kind of forces which are acting on a particle would come and would come under a different category of a chapter that would be dynamics and we'll be covering dynamics later on in different videos. So to start with uh, position, let us write what is the position. So the position is defined as the location of a particle in the space at a certain moment of time. So this is how a position of a particle is defined. There are a couple of things to note in this definition. First is the keyword space and second is time. So the space and time are two variables in which generally we'll be defining all the basic quantities of this chapter. The, what do we mean by space? Space is everything which we have around us and space is, a, is the area in which we are moving. So if you are defining that, okay, I'm moving from this position to this position, that is I'm moving in space. And we know about time, that time is always increasing and ticking, whatever we are doing around us. So the position of a particle is defined with respect to space and time. And specifically in the definition, it is written that the certain mo at a certain moment of time. So because time is increasing, let's say I'm starting with time t equal to zero and then it is going up to time t equal to 10 seconds. Then a certain moment of time will be at a certain time, let's say five seconds or four seconds. So I'm focusing on a, only a certain instant of a time and that's where I'm defining the position with respect to the space where the particle is located. So uh, what does the position tell us? The position tell us that where the particle is at a certain, at an instant of time. So this is the basic question which a position generally answers for us. If you're talking about a 1D motion, that is a one dimensional motion, for example, a car moving on a road, then we can easily define the position of a car. So let's say this is the car which is moving on a road and I can define that, okay, this is the position of the car and I can define it as XA. Because the position is a vector, because it is defined in the direction in which we are measuring the position of the any object or any particle. So we can define that the, the position of the car right now is, let's say P vector is X A I cap, if I'm considering this to be X vector. Similarly, if I'm going into 2D motion, it is two dimensional motion, then I have an X component and I also have a Y component. Then a position at a certain instant of time would be defined, let's say at this point, then I can say this is P and the coordinate can be written as X comma Y. But the actual position will be defined with respect to an origin. And the position vector would be the vector joining from the origin or any reference point. So this is origin or a reference point 
grid is not moving in the space with respect to time. So the position vector would be this r. So I can say that the position vector is r vector or x i cap plus y j cap. One important thing that the position is defined at a certain instant of time. So definitely we are not writing that at what instant we are defining this position, but whenever we are encountering that in any question that okay, what is the position of a particle at t equal to 5 seconds or what is the position of a particle at t equal to 4 seconds, then we are specifically finding the position at that instant of time. Uh, going ahead, the second quantity which we are interested in which is used a lot to define the motion of a particle is displacement. So displacement is defined as the vector joining the final position and the initial position during a time interval. So basically displacement is defined when we are saying that the particle or an object was present at a particular position at an instant of time. But now, at the other instant of time, it has moved to a different position. And now we are interested in this change in the final position with respect to the initial position. So if I am saying that, okay, let's consider the 1D motion first, that if I am saying that at time t1, the pa position of the object was xA, and it is 1D motion, and I am saying that this is at time t equal to t1 seconds. Now, at time t equal to t2, what is the position of the particle? Let's say the position of the particle is this. And I can say that now the position of the particle is xb. And this is, yes. So the displacement would be the vector joining the final position and the initial position. It would start from the initial position. So the vector would be this. So the displacement vector can be written as x b minus x a. So it would be x b minus x a i cap. That is final position minus initial position. But a specific characteristic of the displacement which is mentioned in the definition itself is that instead of writing down a moment of time, it is defined for a time interval because we are concerned with the positions at two different instants of time and we are taking a, a subtraction of those two those those two positions so this this position sorry this displacement is defined from t1 to t2 because this time interval is really important while defining a displacement similarly if for the same object i am defining a displacement which is from time t2 to t3, then I would be writing, then at time t2, the initial position was xb. At time t3, let's say the particle has moved at this position and the new coordinate of the particle is x3. Then the final position would be x, uh, xc, let's say, the c, it is a c point now, and i cap. Generally in 1D motion we do not write this i cap because it is specifically known to us that we are considering a 1D motion and th there is only one vector along which we will be defining every other thing like position, displacement and all the things. Displacement can also be similarly defined in a 2D plane. So, so let us say if this is my this is my first position and this is my second position or this was my position at time interval at t1 and this one at t2. So the position vector at time t1 would be this which is r1. The position vector at time t equal to 2 would be this. This is the origin. It, it would be r2. 
then what will be the displacement? The displacement from time t1 to t2 will be final position minus initial position. So I can write that r2 vector minus r1 vector. Or I can, through the addition law of vectors, we, I can say that it would be equal to ab vector. So this way I can clearly define a position in 1D motion as well as a 2D motion. And we know that displacement is a vector quantity because it has direction as well as it has a magnitude. But many times we are considering that displacement is, because it is dependent only on the final and the initial position, it is not taking into account the path which we have taken to go from the initial to the final position. It is possible that the particle might have moved a little ahead, then backwards, and then forward, and then would have reached at a position at the time instant of t2. So to take into account, there is another like quantity which define, which takes into account, it is known as distance. So distance is a simple thing which takes into account the length, actual length of the path covered. Just to give an example, let's say I have an object which, which starts at time t equal to t1 at, uh, at 2 meters from a reference. So this is 2 meters. And it reaches this position at time t equal to two, t2 and uh, now from origin it is at 8 meters. So we can easily say that displacement between time between this time interval of t1 and t2 is 6 meters. So the displacement would be 6 meters. But the actual motion of the car was this. It moved ahead to 6 meters, then it moved backwards, and then it moved ahead, ahead to 8 meters. So the actual displacement, actual distance was moving ahead from 2 to 6 meters, that is 4. Then moving backwards from 6 to 2, that is 4, and then from 2 to 8, that is 6. So the actual distance was 14 meters. So distance is a scalar quantity, it is not a vector quantity because it is only taking into account the actual length of the path covered. And distance can also, can also not be a negative quantity. Because let's say if I am starting from this point, I'm moving forward by let's say x meters, and then I'm coming back to that position itself. Then the displacement can be zero, but the distance would be the length of the path moved forward plus the length of the path moved backward, and that would be a positive scalar quantity. So in this video, we defined position and displacement, and we also related distance with displacement, and we discussed that what do we mean by an instant of time and what do we mean by uh, an interval of time. In next videos, we will be, cover, we'll be covering two other quantities which are velocity and acceleration and which will be using the knowledge of the position and displacement which we have discussed in this video. Thank you.